All right, now I've saved to my desktop a bunch of, J of JPEG and PNG files. that are potentials for my project, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my class folder, create a folder that is exercise number one. And then I'm going to drag all of these from the desktop into it. Why? Because that organizes them a little bit. And it also does something I really like in Max. Now that they're in their own folder, I can use this option here with the three dots at the top of the folder, and I can say show view options. And then just for this folder, you never want to make it the default for everything, right? So I can increase the size of those icons, and then I can group them by name until they kind of all fit on the screen. This is what's called in the digital art world a design board. It's all of your assets there in front of you, like they're up on the wall on a, a cork board. I can also use my view options to decrease the, the space between them, right? So I want to get all of them onto the screen. There they go. This way I can kind of see them and decide which ones do I want to use. And the ones I'm most excited about using, like this one, I'm going to right click and mark with a green label. I like that one. I like this one. I like this one. I think this one has some potential. It's a nice varied line weight. And let's see. These are just kind of too busy. So I think this one. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Now I can arrange them by their tag. And then it will separate them into the ones I've indicated. Right? I could have backup ones too. Like this could be a backup. Mark it as blue. And it would be in its own. But these are the five I'm most interested in using. And then of these five, I have a favorite. Because you need to pick one that you're going to start with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this one. So how do I start this project? If I start it in PhotoP, like it says in these step-by-step -step directions, once you have your different assets, you're going to go to photop.com, just like we did last class. And then I can just take that file that's my favorite and drop it in. Now what I would need to do is give myself some space around it. And I do that by going to image canvas size. Let me grow the, uh, the size of the tools here so you can see it. So. Just like we did earlier in preview, I'm going to go to image and then canvas size. And I'm going to increase it two inches. And I want to make it eight inches wide by 10 inches tall. There we go. Now I'm going to go to image and image size. So first I did canvas size. Now I'm going to do image size. And I want to make sure that it's at least 300 pixels per inch, which is what this is. It's weird that they say DPI and then they say pixels per inch because it's not DPI. DPI is dots per inch for a printer. This is pixels per inch for the computer. But we want a minimum of 300 pixels per inch. And we want it to be at a dimension of 8 by 10 inches. Good. Now I'm able to bring on other projects or other assets. So this one, I drag and drop it in. You see how it comes in on top. And before I can do anything else, it's it gives me this what's called a transform box, this blue box, which allows me to rotate it. It allows me to stretch it, like scale it bigger. 
If I right click within it, it will let me do things like flip it horizontally or vertically. And I kind of like that. So maybe I'll stretch it a little bit as long as it fits within the 8x10 and then hit return. By hitting return, you are placing it. Now let me do my next one. Make it bigger. Let's rotate it. Maybe let's flip it horizontally. And make sure that it's not cropped off the edge. Now if I want to distort it, instead of just scaling it, I can hold down shift and that will let me stretch it as long as I can fit it all on. And if I do right click, and this is one of my favorites, and use warp, then I can actually stretch it in different ways, which works really well with line art. So I have a foot coming out there. I have other textures coming out, like these feathers on this side. Now, it's already getting pretty hard to see what's going on, right? Because everything's layering on top, and I only have three layers. So if you ever want to see it a little bit more clearly, just turn off the eyeballs, and you can see them one at a time. It's also a little hard to see with this gray grid behind it. So I'm going to do this step where I make a new layer. And I can do that by going to Layer and saying New Layer. Or the shortcut is this is the layer window. I can go to the bottom of the layer window next to the trash can. It looks like a post-it. Click on that and it will give me a new blank layer. On that new blank layer, I'm going to say Edit, Fill, and I'm going to fill it with white at 100% normal mode. So I basically just filled a pixel layer with white. Now I'm going to drag that down underneath everything. So I see just the black lines on white instead of that grid. Now, those are all from Pixabay. They were all what are called PNG files. They were all transparent. So they don't have any white pixels. They're just black pixels. But what if I bring in something, let's see, from my folder, that is a JPEG that's not a PNG, was from a Google image search, not from Pixabay. If I drag and drop that in, and I put that over the top, it covers up everything else. And that's because this file has white pixels and black pixels and gray pixels. So how can I make it so I can see what's underneath? What I can do is I can change the blending mode where it says normal here, and we're going to change it to multiply. And that's going to only let the dark pixels come through. So now when it's on that, I'm going to go to edit and free transform. The shortcut for that is option command T in, in photo P. And that gets me back to this transform box. And I'm going to go right to right clicking within it and warping it because I don't like how rectangular it is. And I, I always talk about using warp like it's rolling out cookie dough with a rolling pin. You can kind of push and pull it in different directions. Gather it in different ways. All right, now I've got four that make a big mess when all layered together. I need one more. So I'm going to bring it in. And maybe I keep this kind of symmetrical, but maybe I'll flip it horizontally. Or maybe flip it vertically, have it be upside down. Okay. So now I've got five different layers on a white background. And the image size, which you can always check, is 8 by 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch. That's all, all good. Before I change these from being smart objects, I'm going to take that pixels per inch and I'm going to change it to what we call our studio resolution. So 300 is standard minimum print resolution. 
But for our studio, I like to go 50 pixels per inch higher. And that gives us a little bit of leeway for, for enlarging it in printing. So I'm going to make it 8 by 10 by 350. And as long as they're still smart objects, which we'll talk about, it's not going to hurt their quality. All right. So I can zoom in and I can see there's pretty good quality to these pixels. Even though it's way bigger than the screen. The one that's worst quality is definitely the one from Google Images, which is this one. You can see how that pixel quality is not nearly as sharp as the one from the ones from Pixabay. But I'm going to show you how we can clean it up. So what if I want to delete or clean up a layer? So it's this layer. If I try to use my eraser, it won't let me. It will say smart object must be rasterized first. When they have these little black squares in the, the layer preview, that means it's a smart object. It means it's referencing an external file, these external files, and reproducing them here. So what we're going to do now that we have it the right size is I'm going to go through each of these and right click and then say rasterize. What that does is it locks the pixels into the program so that we can do whatever we want to them. So now I can use my eraser, but the tool that's even better for this project we're just learning is the lasso. This lasso is a direct way to select pixels, and I'm just going to select around this writing here and then just hit delete. And I don't really like these straight lines here, even though I curved them with warp. So I'm just going to lasso around them and hit delete. But what if I accidentally selected some things I didn't want to? If I hold down Option and I use the lasso, you'll see it change at the top in Photo P. This will change to subtracting from my selection. So if I'm holding down Option, I can subtract from the selection I made and keep that hand in there. And what if I wanted to select more than I selected? Well, if I hold down Shift, it will be additive instead of subtractive. So then I can add to my selection just a little bit. And then I hit Delete. Remember the limitations for this project? You're not allowed to create your own pixels, but you are allowed to modify these existing pixels. So if I'm like Arturo Herrera doing Walt Disney stuff and I don't want to be sued, especially for this one that's from DeviantArt and has a, a Creative Commons license that doesn't allow for derivation, I have to treat this like it's fully copyrighted. And I just want to get rid of any marks that make it really identifiable. So I might just even take out a big chunk of it. Take out the eyes. I'm really just trying to reduce this to interesting lines. I don't really need the symmetry. So I might get rid of this. And I'm just using my lasso and then hitting delete. And I'll get rid of this arm. And I'm just using my mouse. But if you want to be a little bit more precise, you can start to use your, your tablet and stylus. So I'll switch to that. And then if I want to zoom in and get more precise, I can use Command plus to zoom in and Command minus to zoom out. So now with my stylus, it's a little bit easier to get in there and do really clean cutouts. Even on these messy pixels. Each time you start a new selection with the lasso tool, it will deselect the last selection unless you're holding down shift or option. Shift will add to the selection, option will subtract from it. So in this way I think of this use of the lasso like using an exacto knife on a coloring book and just cutting around the exact lines you want to keep and cutting out the ones you don't want to keep. I'm zooming in, 
by using Command plus. And then you might see that I'm dragging 